Welcome back to the second part of the lesson on exact first order differential equations. I thought we should take a look at a second example. But let's go ahead and start with a quick review. The differential equation m of x comma y dx plus n of x comma y dy equals zero, or the differential equation in this form here, is an exact differential equation in a region R in the xy plane if the left side of the equation corresponds to the differential of some function f of x comma y. Remember, if f of x comma y equals a constant c, then its differential must equal zero, which leads us to the fact that if we do have an exact differential equation, then the partial root of f with respect to x must equal m of x comma y, and the partial of f with respect to y must equal n of x comma y. So to solve these types of differential equations, we'll first test to see if we do have an exact differential equation. To do that, we want to test to make sure these two partial derivatives are equal to each other. If they are, we have an exact differential equation where its solution will be f of x comma y equals c. And we can find our function f of x comma y by solving these two equations here. So let's go ahead and take a look at our second example. So the first step is to identify our function m, which is this function here, and our function n, which is here. Once we've done this, we'll test to see if we have an exact differential equation by making sure these two partial derivatives are equal to each other. So let's go ahead and do that. So to find the partial derivative of m with respect to y, we're treating x as a constant. So the derivative of cosine x sine x would be zero. The derivative of this term here is going to be negative two xy. And now we'll find the partial derivative of n with respect to x. So we're treating y as a constant. The derivative of negative x squared would be negative two x, but then we have to multiply it by our constant y, so we have negative two xy as well. So these are equal, therefore we have an exact differential equation, which means our solution will be in the form of f of x comma y equals a constant c, where we can find our function f of x comma y by solving these two equations here. Now based upon which of these two equations we pick first, we are going to have to integrate both sides of the equation. So we're going to have to either integrate m or integrate n. Looking at our two functions, it's going to be easier to integrate our function n rather than m. So for this example, we're going to start with this second equation here, which tells us the partial derivative of f with respect to y must equal our function n of x comma y. So if we integrate both sides of this equation with respect to y, we will recover the y part of our function f. So let's start by doing that. So this means f of x comma y must equal the integral of n of x comma y, which is y times the quantity one minus x squared, and we're going to integrate, and we're going to integrate with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So this tells us f of x comma y is going to be equal to when integrating here, we're treating x squared as a constant, so the integral of y would just be y squared divided by two, or one-half y squared times the quantity one minus x squared. Now this is only recovering the y part of our function, not the x part, so our constant of integration is going to be some function of x, let's call it g of x. Now that we've recovered the y part of our function f, now we'll use the second equation here to recover the x part. So if the partial derivative of f with respect to x is equal to m of x comma y, that means if we find the partial derivative of f, which is given here with respect to x, we can set it equal to our function m. So when we differentiate this with respect to x, we're treating y as a constant, the derivative of negative x squared is going to be negative two x, but then we have to multiply it by one half y squared. That's going to give us negative x y squared, and then the derivative of g x is just g prime of x, and this must equal m of x comma y, 
which is cosine x sine x minus xy squared. Notice how both sides of this equation have negative xy squared, so we can conclude that g prime of x must equal cosine x sine x. So now if we integrate both sides of this equation, we can find g of x and therefore find our function f of x comma y again once we find g of x. Let's do this part on the next slide. So again, now we're going to integrate both sides of this with respect to x. So we'll, so we'll have the integral of g prime of x dx must equal the integral of cosine x sine x dx. Here we'll have to perform a u substitution. Let's go ahead and let u equal sine x. Therefore, differential u is going to be equal to cosine x dx. So written in terms of u, this is just going to be the integral of u du. So on the left side, we're just going to have g of x equals, the integral of u would be u squared divided by two, where u is equal to sine x. So we'd have one half sine squared x. And I will leave off the constant of integration because remember our final solution is going to have a constant as well. Remember from the previous screen we found that f of x comma y was equal to one half y squared times the quantity one minus x squared plus g of x. But now we know g of x, so f of x comma y must equal one half y squared times the quantity one minus x squared plus g of x, which is one half sine squared x. Remember the solution to our differential equation was f of x comma y equals a constant c. Therefore our solution is going to be one half y squared times the quantity one minus x squared plus one half sine squared x equals a constant c. Now we could multiply through by two to simplify this a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that on the next slide. So here if we multiply both sides of this equation by two, and let two c equal c sub one, we can write our solution as y squared times the quantity one minus x squared plus sine squared x equals c sub one. This is our general solution to the exact differential equation. To show this graphically, we could select values for c and then graph specific solutions to this differential equation. So let's go ahead and finish by doing that. Again, to get these graphs, I set c equal to these constants and then graph the functions. So each color represents one solution of the family of solutions. And of course, there are many more. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.